Welcome back. So there you have some of the testimony going on. I'm trying to do a quick legal research because, of course, I'm, I don't practice in Tennessee, but it's very interesting to see how this play out. We are joined here, of course, by Michael. We've been talking for some time, but we also have Jennifer Brandt with us. Jennifer, welcome for today. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? So just to break it down, we're hearing the last trial, not guilty, murder one, deadlock on murder two, then gets uh, a plea deal to voluntary, not involuntary manslaughter. And as I look it up here, voluntary manslaughter is a class C felony. Uh, the sentence range for that is three to 15 years of in prison. So if you look at the range of three to 15 years, he gets three to six, that's definitely on the low end. So, I mean, it, it would seem like a, good, like a good deal, would it not, Jennifer? I think so. Um, I think it... I think it's a good deal, but if you hear him testify, I mean, you really can see how he is just really pouring his heart out. And, you know, I just, I feel for him. I do in some ways, you know, I, I think that he was in a really tough situation. So I think the judge is taking that into account um, and looking at a shorter sentence for him. Yeah. And then I think what you're, what you're touching on, Jennifer, that's a really like human emotion. Like everyone feels that. I, I, and I felt the same way as I'm listening to him. And there's a part of me, and, and I'm sorry to say it, Michael, there's a part of me in the back of my mind that says, take it to trial. You'll win it. Put him back on the stand. Because he, he yeah. sounds so persuasive, Michael. I, I, I do this in my own practice. I go back and forth, and I'm like, I know this is a good deal, Michael, but whoo, I think I can do it. I really do. Does him on the stand there, Michael, change anything for your calculus as to whether or not this was a good deal to take, and especially when you now know the sentence range is three to fifteen, and he's getting three to six. He, I agree with Jennifer. He does sound uh, very honest and, and forthright, and it is pouring out his heart. But it, it doesn't change my calculus. I mean, the, the charges. And excuse me, I think I was saying earlier they can go back on the murder one. He was found not guilty, so double jeopardy applies. So he's he's risking the murder two charge, but still, that's significant time. And although I feel for him, I think that this is the smart move. And especially if your client is willing to take that deal, and it's not some big you know tug of war between you two, I think. It's a huge victory, and we as defense attorneys have to kind of sit back sometimes and accept that that is our win, that, yes, it is amazing being in trial, pointing to that jury, claiming your client's innocence, and hearing not, that not guilty. It's a feeling that just can't be replaced unless you've been there, and all three of us have. But there, I, I personally still have that same feeling of gratification, knowing that I got an excellent deal for my client. I poured my heart out into the case, and, and justice was served. And I think it is here in this particular uh, negotiation. Oh man. oh, man. See, I apologize for looking down. I, I wish I had some of our producers in just my day-to-day -day life because as we're talking about this, I'm looking at the plea agreement here, and, and, it, and it looks like a sweetheart deal because not only do, is there the possibility of jail time, there's also the possibility of, a, of a, up to $10,000 fine, and they mark $0 on that fine. So he's paying no additional charges on the fine. He's got the lower end of the plea agreement. They're bringing all the way down from a murder to down to a voluntary manslaughter. Slaughter. I mean, like I said, I, I love trials. I love to go, but I, I, I'm trying to find something to say other than, hey, I think the defense did the right job here. Now, Michael, you touched on something that I want to explore a little about always checking with your client. Linda Kenny Bodden on the, here on the network is always saying that there are a few things that are completely up to the, to the, the defendant. That is their willingness to testify. That's their choice. We, we can't do anything about that, right? and whether or not they want to take the plea. So even as I sit here thinking, hey, I can win this, let's go, let's go, let's go. If your client says take the plea, Jennifer, the law says you've got to take it. So maybe this is a situation where the client says, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the numbers, man. I've been incarcerated since August of 2018. That's about a year and change. When they give me the three to six, maybe I just got to do three and I get out for the last three years on parole and I can, I can get through parole, I, I won't be reincarcerated. So maybe this calculus is really the, the defendant say, I just gotta do another year and a half and, and, and then I'm done, I'm, I'm free. Uh, I think that's the right calculation, what do you think? I absolutely agree with you. I think that he's definitely taking that into account because he has to, he has to look at the risk going forward to trial and losing. And you know, it might be a lot more jail time and he's got this deal in front of him right now. So I think that, um, given all of those factors and the fact that he's a young guy and probably just, you know, figures I'll get my time over with, get out, and then I can start my life uh, anew. So I, I, 
I, I think he probably did take all of that into account. Plus the fact he's been in jail already for a little while. So he figures maybe just a little bit more and I'm, I'm out of here. You know, I'm done with it. Yeah, if he's, if he's serving, so in, I know in New York, when you, it's, we call it like an indeterminate sentence where they'll give that range. That first number can often be the number in which you actually serve. And then the back end is more like, hey, if you do your good time or whatever it may be, that will be your parole time. Um, so if he's only serving three years and then the rest is parole, Michael, he's been in for about, I mean, math is not my strong suit, but about a year and three to four months. So maybe he's thinking, hey, man, I, I did almost a year and a half. It's just another year and a half and I get to walk or I can roll the dice and man, too, that could be life for 20, 25 years. I would think, I mean, you're, you're in Vegas, so I'm not sure how much of a gambling man you are, but I don't know if I roll the dice on this one. Yeah, being born and raised here, you, you learn real quick to limit your gambling. Otherwise, the mortgage doesn't get paid. <laughs> so I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep it to my sports bets on the on the weekend. But ab absolutely, uh, depending on how the, the sentence structure is, as you were mentioning earlier, and every state is different, there's certain felonies, at least here in the state of Nevada, that you get good time credits on the top of your sentence so that six-year number can get reduced and potentially get uh, time taken off at that bottom. So quite frankly, that uh, three-year sentence might be even less. He might be getting it out in six months, a year. I'm not sure of how Tennessee actually does their sentencing structures, but let's just call it the three years just to be safe still another year and a half and you can guarantee yourself with good behavior you're walking out those doors and just like jennifer said starting your life over at a young age it's just a no-brainer to me I, I can't really spin it any other way yeah and and like i said earlier before jennifer you had joined us i was like the ability to give your clients a guarantee that that trial does not afford them to say hey man if you take this year and a half you out You've got your whole yeah. life ahead of you. Very interesting. Let's take another look at uh, Sean Foley on the stand as he testified. Maybe he testifies so amazingly we all change our mind. I don't know, but let's take a look. <laughs> I, I think just watching that, we can now truly understand what the jury decided and, and came up with when they said not guilty as to the murder one and were hung on the murder two. I think all of our guests are correct uh, as as... It may not be entertaining to all agree, but like minds and strong oral advocates uh, are what we bring you here at the Long Crime Trial Network, truly trial tested uh, lawyers. And we know that when you get an offer like this, you take it and run because that is a win for your client. Now we're seeing some movement in the Nicholas Cruz case. Like I said, 1.30 and it's 1.31 here in New York time is when that hearing should begin. But we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come right back and jump right into the courtroom of the Nicholas Cruz case.